All right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Structure Free Chica Chica Learning. And in this video, we're going to return to reinforce concrete analysis and do a design moment strength calculation for an upside down triangle. And we are going to be given that the concrete compressive strength is going to be 5 KSI. We've got a grade 60 steel, which means we have the yield strength of steel of 60 KSI. And what we want to find is the design moment strength v m n like this so here i'm assuming that you've got some familiarity familiarity with a uh with reinforced concrete analysis like you can probably analyze a rectangular singly reinforced concrete beam pretty well so now we're going to throw in some tricks or some challenging geometry to the problem and here is what the cross section looks like it's an upside down triangle yeah i can live with that and let's see here i've got hmm no maybe i can't live with that yeah i can live with that all right and so here i've got this triangle cross triangular cross section that has a width of 20 inches and it's 10 and 10 right in the middle and it's got a height here 24 inches like this and then we've got two steel bars here that i'm gonna place boom and boom all right like that and we've got let's see here we know that the dimension to the centroid of the steel reinforcement the center of the steel reinforcement here is this is 16.5 inches and we'll say that the the moment that's applied causes compression at the top and tension at the bottom and so what we have for the reinforcement are two number eight bars here and this is our our given geometry for the cross section with the material properties and probably a good habit to form in general when you're dealing with reinforced concrete is to draw the strain and stress profile associated at ultimate just quickly draw that strain profile so we have compression at the top boom and at ultimate right here this value right here reaches 0.003 strain Boom, where the strain is zero is my neutral axis. And this right here will represent the strain in my steel. Boom, like that. And then what's going to be important for me for the stress profile, force slash stress profile, we have the equivalent stress block. Boom. And the depth of the equivalent stress block. Yes. And here the strain. So I have some stress in the steel, which I'll put like this, FS, and it has a tension force resultant, TS, just like we would have a compression force resultant, C sub C. Yes, and the location of that compression force resultant is here, and we would call that Y bar. Yup, 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 and this distance right here this moment arm that's going to come into play later this moment arm that's going to come into play later is we'll call this this is d minus y bar yes and so what you should notice here is that the strain and the stress profile in fact look the same as if it were a rectangular cross section or a singly reinforced rectangular cross section instead of this singly reinforced triangular cross section. Hopefully you notice that, hey, it doesn't really change, okay? And, well, I'll, and so the question probably is like, where does it change? So does it change when we have to find the neutral axis depth? or the depth of the equivalent stress block. The next thing that we wanna do is to determine the location of the neutral axis. You know, locating CNA is really useful. You're also gonna get the equivalent stress block depth. You're gonna find the strain in the steel once you have that within this process. And then you're gonna be able to get phi as well, the strength reduction factor. So all of that is related to this part of the process. And locating the CNA is essentially section equilibrium with forces or force equilibrium. And so we would say some of the forces in the horizontal is equal to zero. So here we would say TS 
minus cc equals zero or ts equals c sub c like this. And then I'm going to replace that. Let's see. I'm going to assume the steel yields epsilon s is greater than epsilon y. And now I can say, oh, well, that case, the force in the steel is as times fy. The force resultant of that compression block is 0.85 fc prime and the area in compression. And I don't know what that area in compression is. All right. And what I will do is I will solve for the area in compression. AC would be ASFY over 0.85 FC prime. The diameter of a number eight bar is one inch and the area of a number eight bar is 0.79 inches squared here. And you can look that up in any table or in the, back, in the appendix of your ACI code uh, here. Check this out. So now we're going to plug and chug some numbers. So the area of tension reinforcement, two times 0.79 inches squared. The yield strength is 60 KSI divided by 0.85 and 5 KSI like this. And this will give me 22.31 inches squared. And that is the area in compression. And so now the question is, well, shoot, how much of this, how far down do I go? And so if I draw a line here, I'll draw a horizontal red line for A, for the depth A here. So here is the, I'll shade in the area in compression. This red outlined area is the area in compression, just like that, boom. I've got to describe this trapezoid geometry and set it equal to AC. Doing that, I'll be able to determine A, or the depth of the equivalent stress block here. Now it's just a matter of geometry. I'll say that, oh, the width here, the width from this point to this, this, this right here is W. That, I'll call that width W. I know that top width is 20 inches right here. And I know that the area of a trapezoid, the area of a trapezoid is the average of the uneven side. So the average of B1 plus B2 times the height H, just like that. And so if I look at this, I would have the area in compression, this AC is one half the 20 inches plus W times A. So what the heck is W is the next question that we have to ask ourselves. And I know from, from just looking at the entire cross section, the entire triangle, if I look at some geometry there, by similar triangles, I see, well, the width to length ratio of this large triangle is 20 over 24. 20 to 24, starting from this point here, from the tip of this triangle. And then, so the length to width ratio that I would be looking for, for the, for W, would be this distance. This would be 24 inches minus A. And, and then the width, so this would be the width to length, which is 24 inches minus A. By similar triangles, we can figure out a relationship between W and A. And this W is equal to five, six times 24 inches minus A. Boom. And that's it. It's just more geometry. All right. So geometry, nothing complicated, just additional geometry. And if I substitute that definition of W into this relationship here, like that, and this, if I go ahead and I do a little bit more algebra, this will be, and this will be equal to the 22.31 inches squared. And then I, all I'm going to do is solve for A. And here, if I, you know, if I can, I can rearrange this again, it just turns into a quadratic equation. Boom. And now I can just use the quadratic formula or whatever calculator or solver to solve for A. And here I, I will get, if you just go ahead and plug and chug, I got A of 1.143 inches like this. And so this is the depth of my equivalent stress block. And now using this depth A, I can also calculate CNA 
And that is really just from knowing that A is beta 1 times CNA, and CNA is A over beta 1, which is 1.143 inches, and beta 1 for 5 KSI concrete is 0.8, and this would be 1.43 inches. Boom. All right. And once I have CNA, I can go ahead and use that to calculate the strain in the steel from similar triangles. So if I just go back to the strain profile, you know, I know this distance right here is D minus CNA. And so from similar triangles, just like before, this is epsilon S is D minus CNA over CNA times 0 0.003. And if I plug and chug, we get 0 0.032. And this number right here, this strain in the steel, is definitely greater than 0 0.005, which is required for a tension controlled beam. And as long as our tensile strain is greater than this 0 0.005, then we can use phi, or the strength reduction factor, of 0 0.9. All right, all right, all right. So, I, I mean, looking at my drawing, my drawing is definitely not to scale because this A, the way that I drew A, it is not 1.4, you know, it's not 1.1 inches. Anyway, but the idea is still the same. And so here, I know that my strength reduction factor is 0.9. I have my depth of the equivalent stress block. My, my cross section is tension control. So technically it's legal in, for, with respect to strength for the ACI code. And now what I wanna do is determine the design moment strength. And that comes from moment equilibrium of my stress profile. And the nominal moment that we're looking to solve for here would actually be acting like this. And when I apply moment equilibrium, we'll get this rather famous or popular for reinforced concrete <laughs> equation, this ASFY times D minus Y bar. Oh, in fact, you know, because the strain in the steel is 0.032, this is, we've also verified the assumption that this is, the steel has yielded. It is greater than epsilon Y for grade 60 steel, which is 0.0207. And this steel has yielded. All right, so our assumption is valid. And now I can go through here and, and calculate the nominal moment. And you know, I know AS, I know FY, I know D. The only thing I don't know is Y bar. And again, this is where geometry comes into play. You know, I've got this, cr I've got this area in compression that looks like this. A is equal to 1.143 inches. This is 20 inches. And the width here, this width right there was, oh, you know, we didn't calculate it yet. Uh, let's see, according to our relationship here, it would be right here. The, this width W would be 5, 6 times 24 minus 1.143 inches, which is 19.05 inches. And so I know that this dimension right here is 19.05 inches. So what I need is to calculate the centroid of this trapezoid from the top. So what is that? And you know, I can use the first, if I, I can look up an equation or I can just use the first moment of area is, which is what I will do. And I could break this up, break this up into three pieces. So I will boom, so two triangles and a rectangle like this. All right, and that means each of the 0.475 inches and this is 0.475 inches. So I am going to apply my first moment of area for Y bar. Y bar is the sum of A Y over the sum of A. Let's see, I've got, I'll call this first triangle, this first purple area. It, let's see, the area of that is one half, the base times the height, uh, and there times the arm, which is the distance from the reference to the center of the triangle. And in this case, our reference is in reinforced concrete. When we're doing this Y bar, it's usually Y bar from the top here. And so here, this location is 1.1. The centroid of the triangle would be 1.143 inches divided by three. There are two of these. So I'm going to, there's two of these purple areas. So I'm going to multiply that by two plus 
the rectangular area here. Area of the rectangle, which is base times the height and the centroid of that rectangle. Total area in compression is actually, we already calculated that before. That area in compression is this 22.31 inches squared. And when I go through and I plug and chug, I will get Y bar 0.564 inches like this. And now I can calculate the nominal moment MN, which is two. The area of steel is two times 0.79 inches squared times 60 KSI times D, which was 16.5 inches, minus Y bar, 0.564 inches. And this will give me a nominal moment of 1,510.73 kip inch. And if I convert this to kip feet, or I divide it by 12, uh, this will be 125.9 kip feet. The design moment strength, VMN, will be 113.3 kip feet. And done, yes, all right. So we have calculated the design moment strength of a singly reinforced upside down triangle. And if we notice the process is not any different than a singly reinforced rectangular beam, the only challenge comes with the change in geometry. And really that's about as difficult as it can get. So hopefully that was useful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Subscribe, like, share. You know the story. All right, take it easy. Structure free!